Good morning and welcome to our UU Holton Sunday Service online edition from the Unitarian Parlor in Holton, Maine. We hope that you are well where you are. Although we do not share the same space and are spread miles apart, we endeavor to find ways to maintain spiritual connection, offer support and encouragement, and make the best of the COVID-created challenges each of us face in our everyday lives. We are still together, even when physically apart. We are so glad that you've joined us today. It's also a treat to have Reverend Dale Holden back with us today as our guest pianist. And the title of her prelude this morning is Humoresque from Dvorak. So let's try it. 
we're going to do a one-minute equanimity meditation. So sit comfortably, breathe naturally, take note of your thoughts and any emotions, and just allow them to be as they are. Don't hold on to anything. Don't reject anything. Just notice what is there without adding any commentary or analysis. Just let be with equal treatment. Be okay with it all. When I sound the chime, our meditation will begin. And in one minute, I will sound the chime again to end our session. In a world filled with the darkness of ignorance, let us bring the light of reason. In a world filled with the darkness of despair, may we share the light of hope. In a world filled with the darkness of hate, let us shine the light of love. Opening words this morning are by E.E. E. Cummings. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping, greenly spirits of trees and a blue, true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. Now the ears of my ears awake, and the eyes of my eyes are open. When one of us is blessed, we are all blessed. When one of us experiences sorrow, we all feel the pain. As is our custom, let us light candles, real and virtual, for the joys and concerns in our lives. When I woke up this morning at 6 a.m., I could hear an air harvester going uh, on the property next door from us. So this candle is for the fall harvest season, which is in full swing right now. Uh, blessing to farmers, workers, and hoping that the equipment doesn't break down too often. This candle is for the family of Brianna Taylor, uh, legal uh, results came out this week in Louisville, Kentucky. So we pray for those uh, who are protesting in Louisville, New York, American cities, uh, 
we pray that the social uh, unrest uh, will uh, be calm and express uh, our concerns uh, regarding justice in her case and in our country. And lighting a silent candle this morning for those people who are on your heart and concerns. We'll take these few moments uh, for you to review uh, the people in your life, uh, your situation, of friends and neighbors, and we'll offer a prayer for them and for ourselves in just a moment. For those concerns and those names mentioned this morning, we hold them in the light of love and compassion. May our group energy benefit all beings. May our own minds be renewed and restored to a positive and healing state. Blessed are we all on this day. Amen and blessed be. Ex-Governor of California, Jerry Brown, when recently questioned about the continuing wildfires on the West Coast, climate change, and now the coronavirus, commented, this is not the new normal, this is the new abnormal. I think this succinct quote from the always quotable Jerry Brown summarizes what many of us are feeling right now. It's not just that we're facing incredible change, we're facing continual incredible change. This is the new abnormal. There is no going back. We are moving ahead and moving at a breathtaking speed with no near, clear, or convenient end in sight. So this is part two a four-part series on adapting to a changing world. I gave you point one last week, and I deliberately held back on the rest of the outline, trying to build some anticipation or suspense. But this week, I am going to go ahead and give you all four points. I still hope you come back to hear the complete talks in the next two weeks. So here are the four points to adapting to a changing world. One, expect change. Two, accept change. Three, adjust to change. And four, improve with change. So there you have it. Last week was expect change, or do not expect change not to happen. Change happens. This week is accept change. If change is going to happen, don't try to stop it. Accept it for what it is. Take a close look at what's going on, at what's changing, and make sure you are accurately assessing it and seeing it for what it is. This is a key step before, and let me repeat that, before you do anything. That will be next week's point. I've got a short PowerPoint this morning that we're going to try on the flat screen behind me. And we'll see how our cameraman and I make out with this. Change ahead. <clears throat> I 
So no matter what is going on around us, no matter what we see going on around us, no matter what we hear being said, or what we hear on the cable news channels, we need to maintain a positive and certain perspective. We need to hold the world at arm's length, so to speak, to get a clear indicator of how we think and feel about what's going on inside and around us. Sometimes this can feel like walking a high tightrope, and we're just doing our best to keep our balance. And there are so many things that can knock us off balance. One of the most important keys to keeping your balance is knowing when you've lost it. This little kitty has lost it. This cat is cool and focused. Adapting to change requires keeping your balance even when circumstances are way out of the norm. Our point for today, accepting change, is one of the core components of our four-point model. And accept change probably doesn't state the case strongly enough. Embrace change is closer to the point. So in this image, we have yin and yang, male and female, positive and negative, running towards each other like lovers with arms outstretched, ready to embrace. That is how we should relate and respond to change, no matter what the change. We not only accept it, we embrace it. When I met Linda, uh, I was a coffee drinker. She was a tea drinker. So in my cabin, I think I had one can of tea, some Earl Grey in the cabin, and the rest was all coffee. Uh, but when I met Linda, suddenly the tea cupboard began to get larger and larger. And one of our favorite teas was called, uh, from a company called Yogi Tea, Mango Passion. And over time, the company started to rebrand and they changed you know, the packaging and the box. It was still the same tea, but it had a totally different look. So fortunately, I had stashed five or six of these on the side. Uh, and what I like about this particular tea is the quotes that were on the back. And this one is, to be calm is the highest achievement of the self. When I first read the quote, I was not that impressed. To be calm didn't sound like such a big deal. It certainly didn't sound like enlightenment. But the longer I thought about it, the more I began to realize what it was getting at. To be calm. No matter what is going on or what is happening, is a very centered and balanced space to hold. The word that comes to mind is equanimity, defined as a state of psychological stability and composure, which is undisturbed by experience of or exposure to emotions, pain, or other circumstances that may cause others to lose their balance of their mind. Equanimity does not pick or choose, it accepts whatever is there. It doesn't try to avoid it, or change it, or critique it. It allows what is to be. This is known as holding the center. No matter how fast 
things may be spinning around you, you maintain composure, equipoise. Indeed, to be calm is the highest achievement of self. All of that right on a tea bag. Not bad. When you accept and embrace change, you don't waste your valuable time and energy resisting it. Resistance is saying no to what's going on. Instead, like the E.E. E. Cummings poem this morning says, say yes to life. Yes is to accept the what is, embrace it. No matter what it is, you don't have to like it, but you do have to hold it in an equi-balanced manner and look closely. Like our one minute equanimity meditation this morning, don't hold on to anything, don't reject anything. Just notice what is there without adding any commentary or analysis. Just let be with equal treatment. Be okay with it all. So this morning, hold the center, a still point in the middle of the chaos. Watch it all. Be with it all. The one and the many. Spinning, spinning, spinning. In closing, a poem by Rumi titled The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorable. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent to you as a guide from the And now our time has ended, and you leave here today with something you did not have before. Spending time together is always time well spent, even online, and even now as we depart. May we take the spirit of our connection with us no matter where we go. Peace and love. Thank you all for joining us for today's UU Holton Sunday service. Like and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Practice kindness, keep your attitude positive, and look out for those who are having a difficult time. Have a good week, everyone. And Dale, thank you once again for sharing music with us today. It's been a delight, as always. And Dale's postlude is To Life from Fiddler on the Roof. And Dale passed some of the lyrics to me this morning, and I'm going to read those briefly. One day it's honey and raisin cake, next day a stomach ache. Our great men have written words of wisdom to be used when hardship must be faced. Life obliges us with hardship. So the words of wisdom shouldn't go to waste. And if our good fortune never comes, here's to whatever does come. Drink to life.